Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a factorial equation. We have x factorial equals x cubed minus x and we're going to be solving for x values. Before we start solving this problem, I just want to show you a graph of two things. One of them is x factorial and the other one is x cubed minus x. Now x factorial is a discrete function if you only consider non-negative integers but if you consider real numbers using the gamma function you can actually define factorial for all real numbers and the graph is going to look like this so we have the graph of x cubed minus x and we have the graph of x factorial which is the blue one right by the way and as you can see here they seem to be intersecting somewhere between one and two again that is not an integer value, but we're gonna be solving for integers. And if you also look at Wolfram Alpha for solutions, Wolfram Alpha gives us two numerical solutions, which are not integers, by the way. I, I, and I don't know why it doesn't give us any integer solutions. That's why we need to solve this equation for integers. All right, let's get back and see how we can solve this problem. So we have x factorial equals x cubed minus x. To be able to solve this problem, First of all, I'm going to factor both sides. Obviously, x factorial can be written as x times x minus 1 factorial, and x cubed minus x can be factored into x times x squared minus 1. At this point, I can go ahead and cancel out the x's, but before that, I need to consider something, which is x equals 0. So it looks like, based on this equation, x equals 0 is a solution, right? Because 0 times something equals 0 times something else. But... The problem is, this is only defined for non-negative integers, so the smallest value of x is 0. And when x is 0, you get something like negative 1 factorial, which is not defined in the integer case. Make sense? We can only define it within the real numbers, so this equation is not going to work for x equals 0. And you can tell that it's not going to work if you just plug in 0 in the very original equation. On the left hand side you get 0 factorial which is 1, on the right hand side you get 0 cubed minus 0 which is 0 and obviously 1 does not equal 0. I should put in does not equal sign here maybe in between, right? Makes sense? So 0 is not a solution but we can cancel it out. Why? Because we know x does not equal 0 so we're allowed to divide both sides by x. Obviously this equation is only going to work if x is greater than 1 because at this point x cannot be 1 either if x is 1 we get 0 factorial equals 0 again that is incorrect now some people say like 0 factorial should be 0 right because there's nothing to multiply well there's always 1 and 0 factorial can also be thought of if you have one object and you're trying to arrange it uh, I'm sorry if you have no objects and you're trying to arrange it you can just arrange it in one way which is not arranging it because you can't arrange it there's nothing to arrange anyways there's a couple different ways you can approach it this is not the topic so let's get to work on this equation so once we get rid of the x and noticing that 0 and 1 are not solutions we can go ahead and expand a little bit more so x does not equal 0 x does not equal 1 we know that right okay great so, under these conditions, we can go ahead and expand x minus 1 factorial. How? We can go ahead and write it as x minus 1 times x minus 2 factorial. The goal here is to take out a factor of x minus 1, so I can use it along with the difference of two squares. x squared minus 1 can be factored as x plus 1 times x minus 1. And now, as you can see, x does not equal 1, so we're allowed to cancel out x minus 1 by division, and we get a simpler equation. This equation you'll probably recognize we've done a factorial problem recently. I'll share the link down below, and it kind of comes down to the same thing, pretty much. You'll see. So we got something simpler, but it's still not that simple. Now, when you think about it, x minus 2 factorial equals x plus 1. Obviously, you can guess and check, but that's not the best method. Let's go ahead and do this more systematically. And at this point, substitution would be very helpful. 
let's go ahead and call this y and don't ask why. So from here we get x minus 2 equals y which implies x equals y plus 2 which implies x plus 1 equals y plus 3. Why do I need that? Because I'm going to sub it on the right hand side and this one on the left hand side. So I get a simpler equation from here which is y factorial equals y plus 3. Great. So we're at the same point as the other video but now how did we proceed from here? Again you can guess and check. And one of the things that makes it, makes it easier is there's going to be a turning point. For example, if y is equal to 1, 1 factorial and 1 plus 3, obviously this is greater, they're not equal. 2 factorial and 2 plus 3, they're not equal. 3 factorial, 4 factorial, so on and so forth. What happens is factorials grow much faster than linear functions. Therefore, this guy is going to catch up real quick. So it's not going to take too long. Makes sense? But let's still systematize this approach. F subtract y from both sides and now you can factor out a y here. So write this as y times y minus 1 factorial minus y equals 3 and then you can factor out a y and write this as y minus 1 factorial minus 1 equals 3. Awesome. Now what is that supposed to mean? Either y or y minus 1 factorial minus 1 must be a factor of 3. In other words, one of these factors must divide 3, right? So it can only happen if y is equal to 1, 3, negative 1, or negative 3. Let's go ahead and take a look at each case. 1, negative 1, 3, and negative 3. You've got to be careful though. What is y equal to? y is equal to x minus 2. So set these equal to x minus 2. And you're going to get the corresponding x values and see if all of them are acceptable. If you look at the last one, x equals negative 1 is not acceptable because remember, x can't be 0, x can't be 1, x needs to be greater than 1. So the minimum x can be 2. From here, we kind of get x equals 5. From here, we get x equals 1. And from here, we get x equals 3. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to check each of these values. As you know, 3 and 5 satisfy the requirement of x being greater than 1. But does it work in the general equation? Let's go ahead and find out, right? x factorial again on one side and x cubed minus x on the other side. So let's go ahead and test each of these out. For example, if x is equal to 3, then we get 3 factorial equals 3 cubed minus 3. 3 cubed is 27. 27 minus 3 is 24. As you can see, this is not going to work because 3 factorial does not equal 24, right? Obviously, that is not going to work. So, I'm sorry, by the way, I was supposed to... Yeah, I, actually, that's correct. Never mind. I confused myself. x cubed equals x cubed minus x is the original problem. Now, here's a good question. Why didn't it work? Because we just assumed y equals 1, but that doesn't have to be the case because this could be 1 as well. So x equals 3 did not work. x equals 1, as you know, is not going to work because 1 factorial does not equal 0. So this is not going to work either. So we end up with the only possibility x equals 5. And does that work? Hopefully it does. Otherwise, our equation has no integer solutions. It has real solutions, but not integer solutions. Anyways, x factorial equals, we can go ahead and plug it in here. 5 factorial is 120, and 5 cubed minus 5 is 125 minus 5. Again, this works, so this is good, and x equals 5 wins. Yay, we got a solution, and, uh-oh, that just erases the solution, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.